investigating creation, and we have got maybe a couple of the people that he's wanting to come some stuff, so we're glad that you've joined us. Um, those of you who have been here all the time, we have been talking about a question called, how did the world begin? Who could tell me the two main answers that most of the time we get? Yes. Creation. Okay, creation is one. Do you remember the other one? An explosion. Well, yep, and it has a, a name. Do you remember the name that it has? No. Can you help her? Evolution. Evolution, good. And so you were telling us a little bit about evolution, weren't you? It started with an explosion, then had a little cell, and then, Tucker, what happened to those that little cell? It began to grow and grow and grow until millions and millions of years later it created the earth, horses, animals, and everything, right? Yeah, everything began to change and took everything that we have now. So we called that evolution, and we said it took millions of years in order for that to happen. Then Kaylee mentioned about creation. Who can tell me what is creation? Uh, anybody else? Okay. All right, yeah. When God made the world and everything on it. All right, and how many days did it take him? Six. Six days, that's right. Good. We also said, who was the only person or being in the world at this time? Yes. God. God was. And if I wanted to read about creation, uh, where would I go to read about creation? Genesis 1-1. All right, good. In the, in the Bible, and it was in Genesis in the first chapter. Very good job. All right, now, we've already sung our creation song, but let's see if we can remember. What did God make on the very first day? Uh-huh. Um, very first day. Okay, we said he made light and day and night. There you go. Good job. Or light with day and night. All right, what did God make on the second day? Who can remember that? Yes? Sky and water. I'm sorry? Sky and water. Okay, good. There was water all over, and he separated that water, and he made the air or the atmosphere or the sky, we called it. Good. What did God make on the third day? Anybody remember that one? Okay. The land and the earth. Okay, good. He made the land, so now we have water, and he separated all the water that was on the earth, made the land, and then we have all these different plants that were there. Now, last week, what did we talk about that was really, really, really important that all these trees and flowers and bushes and plants need? sun that's right and so we talked about the sunlight and then what did God make on the fourth day which is what we talked about last week day night and well, moon sun and stars all right good the sun moon and the stars now this is the earth God didn't make that last but on day number four but that was the only picture I could find that had yeah. the sun moon and the stars together so you'll have to forgive me for that what a podcast yeah, okay, there you go. All right, now, we also talked about a word called revolving. Do you remember that word? Uh -huh. I don't make my little thing work there. But revolve. We said that the earth moves around or revolves around the sun. And how long does it take for the uh, earth to revolve around the sun? Um, yes, how about you? 365 and a half. Not a half, one fourth. but one fourth. Good job. I told you you can impress lots of people if you put that one fourth in there. They're going to say, wow, you only know your stuff, huh? All right, and that's the same as one year, right? Good. All right, and then we also said that the earth not only goes around the sun, but at the same time, the earth is kind of like spinning around, or we call that rotating. How long does it take for the Earth to rotate one time? 24 hours. 24 hours or one day. Oh, you guys are doing awesome. Good job. All right, then um, where does the moon get its light? Uh, yes. From the sun. Reflection. From the sun. We said it doesn't make its own light, but it simply reflects the light from the sun. All right, then we said the sun is really a star. It looks so much bigger and so much brighter than any of the rest of these stars. Yeah, it's um, it's because it's closer. Right. It's the closest star that we have to the Earth, so it just looks bigger and brighter. All right, good. Now, we learned two things, two facts about stars last week, and these we found in the Bible. 
Do you remember the other thing about them? Yeah. He knows how many chromosomes. Yeah, he, he knows the number. We said scientists that said it's impossible to count all of them because every time they think they get them all, they find another one. But God said he knows the number and he also counts that or has a name for each one of them as well. All right, good. How did God create everything that we have talked about so far? How did we say he does it? Does he have a laboratory and he just mixes all the things together? Uh huh. No, he um, he spoke. All right. The Bible says he just spoke, and just like that, those things happened. All right. Last review question that you guys are doing really well. When God looked at all the things that he had made, what did he say? All right, Jalen. Yeah, it was good. It was good. That's right. He was very pleased with everything that he had made. Now, everything that we've talked about so far, none of those things were just happened to come about. They weren't an accident. They weren't just by chance. They were God's plan. And he is creating everything according to his plan. So I wonder what's next on God's plan. Hmm find out here in just a few minutes all right first of all though I want us to be scientists for a few minutes we've got our lab coats on you've got your little scientific glasses on you've got your gloves on so let's be scientists how many of you have learned about the five senses in school mm -hmm. you learned about it can you tell me any of those five senses smell touch um who else can help him? You're right, you got it, Rebel. Hearing. Hearing. A taste. We've got one more. I think I heard it come over here. Jalen. Seeing. Seeing. All right, good. So we've got this little boy with our five senses up here. And I want us to think for just a few minutes. So far, we've talked about day one to day four of all that God has created. And I want us to think for just a few minutes. What? If you had been there, what would you have seen right now on day four, up through day four? What would you have seen on the earth? If you were to use your uh, sight and you were to look, what would you see? Uh-huh. Water. Okay, water would be one thing. What else might you see? Oh, let's let somebody else know. Land and plants. Okay, we'd well see land and plants. Uh-huh. Um, Else. These might give you some ideas in case you can't think of anything you might see. Darkness. All right, you could see darkness. Yes. What else? Okay, so that would be water. Yes. Okay, the sun. Good. Anything else that you might see in these pictures? Yeah? Light. Okay, so we've talked about darkness, mm -hmm. but what else might we see? What is the that moon. little thing there? Yeah, the moon, the stars might be something else we would oh, see. Light. We might see the mountains. We could see grass. These might be some things that we would see, right? All right, now, what kind of things do you think you might smell if you were there on the earth? Yeah? What do you think? Plants. Okay, because some plants have a nice smell, don't they? Good. What else um, do you smell? You would smell all the trees and what the fruits are growing. Okay, good, good. Anybody else? Yeah. The ocean. Oh, that's really good. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. The ocean does have a smell. It smells salty. Um, Did you think of anything else? Yeah, I couldn't think. Really. Maybe even the fresh air. You know how sometimes the air smells really good? So you might smell that. Yeah, on trees. Okay, so yeah, different kinds of trees. All right, now, what kind of things might you feel if you were here on the earth? Uh huh. Bark. Okay, the bark of trees. That's a good one. Do you have one? What like any kind of plants or right, the flowers, the bushes? Yeah, good. Uh huh. Rocks. Okay, good rocks. The grass. The grass. Great job. Uh huh. Leaves. Leaves. Water. Water. Oh, good. Very good job. So we got lots of things that maybe we could feel, couldn't we? I thought of something else. What if the sun was 
getting on your skin, maybe you feel the Pink warm up. sunshine on your skin, maybe warming you up. Maybe it might make you really hot, but anyway, you might feel it. All right, hold on, we're gonna keep going here just a minute. All right, how about things that you might taste? Because we said taste is also one of our um, five senses. Oh, you gotta raise your hand. Yep, Eliana. Um, grasses. Well, if you were gonna eat grass, I guess you could taste it. Yeah, that's that's fun. Never thought about that. Okay. Um, apples. Okay, so different kinds of fruit, right? Good. Okay, yeah, especially if we were in that salty water, right? You definitely would taste that, but regular water too. Yes? Vegetables and fruit. Okay, vegetables and fruit, good. Um, you would taste the sugary goodness of the sap from the tree. Okay, yeah, they can make some sap. All right, good. Now, last one. We've talked about what we might see. We've talked about what we might taste. We've talked about what we might feel. We've talked about what we might smell. What might you hear at this time? And we can only think about things that we've talked about so far and what God's created. Can you think of anything? Can you hear the ocean? Okay, good. The water, maybe on the waves coming in. Uh, Riley, would you have something? Um, you could hear the trees. Okay, when the wind goes through the trees, we might hear them. Hear the wheat. Okay, any of the wind might come through the trees or the plants or anything. Try to keep your, um, yeah, don't keep putting that inside your mouth, all right? Leave them alone and you can fix it later. Anything else? If you chew the boy, you'll hear you go full. Okay, but um, were there any people there? No, so we wouldn't hear that, would we? So we could hear, mostly what we would hear is the wind going through any kind of trees or bushes. Do you have something else? We could hear uh, maybe rocks falling. Okay, maybe if there was a rock falling, possibly. The favorite of the leaves coming in there. All right, yeah, so maybe if the wind was knocking the leaves or plants or bushes, but there's no animals and there's no people, so they can't make any sounds, can they? No, we wouldn't hear any like birds singing. We wouldn't hear any like bees buzzing around. We wouldn't hear any uh, um, fish. We wouldn't hear the fish, though I don't know that I hear fish very often. I wouldn't hear any dogs Splashing. barking or cow, uh, cats meowing or the cows. You wouldn't hear any of those sounds. It would be so quiet because there was no people and no living things. All right, you can put your hands down because I think we're done with that right now. God is now ready to create the next thing. We're ready for day number five. But before we go on to day number five, I just want to point out something. God has been creating things, and he's been creating things in a specific order. He started with creating light, and then we said God made the atmosphere or the sky with the air. And then we said God made the dry land, and then he made the plants, and then he made the sun, moon, and stars. Now I have a question for you. What if? God made cats and dogs before he made land. That would how would that go? Eliana, how do you think that would work? The animals would die. They would die because they'd have to be swimming, right? 24 hours a day. Yeah. What if God um, had made animals or human beings before he had made the atmosphere with the air in it? They would die. What would happen, Kaylee? We would die, wouldn't we? Because we need that air, don't we? Yes, Tucker. Um, and on on day four, it would be so peaceful to live. It would be peaceful, wouldn't it? Because it would be really quiet, wouldn't it? All right, so you can see God planned everything out, and he had a perfect time for everything that he was making because he knew exactly what the things needed. So we're going to look now at what God made on the next day. And we're going to look back in Genesis chapter 1 because we said that's where God has given us the record for creation. So this is in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 20. And whenever you see a letter after the verse, that means we're either, if it's an A, that means we're going to look at the very first part of the verse. 
later on we're going to look at I'll have a letter B there and that means we're going to look at the end of the verse so let's read that together starting with the end everybody's going to say it together ready and God said let the water spring forth abundantly the moving creature that I have so this verse tells us about God making a moving creature that's going to be in the water what in the world is a moving creature that's in the water. All right, fish, that's right. And so that's what the first thing that God's going to make on um, the fifth day. Now, um, God filled the earth or filled the water with lots of different fish. And we might even call them sea creatures because there's more than just these fish. You know, when we say fish, sometimes we just think of things that maybe you go fishing at the river or a lake or a pond for. But it's much more than just these little fish here. Um, in fact, scientists tell us that there are over 30,000 different kinds of fish or sea creatures. And there are some that are so small, like these ones up here, that you actually need a microscope in order to be able to see them. We call these protozoa. But they're really, really tiny. If you looked in the water, you couldn't even see them with your eye. You have to get water underneath the microscope in order to be able to see them. So these are ones that are super small. But this over here is the blue whale. And can you tell me, can you read that number right there? What does that number tell us? 100 feet. All right, that F stands for feet. So the blue whale is supposed to be the largest animal largest fish and he is 100 feet long now we also have these little things up here I don't think my little thing is working so we'll forget that but these school buses how long are the school buses can you read so them 40, 40, feet. Feet. 40 feet so if we add 40 and we add 40 how much is that 80 80 so how much more do we need 20, which means we need a half of another bus, right? Maybe at school you see where the buses line up in a row. And in order to see how long the blue whale is, you would need two of your big school buses plus another half. Two and a half school buses is how long the blue whale is. That's pretty big, isn't it? Well, you would. Well, you would. <laughs> We're just showing you how big it is. <laughs>
Pickles. Pickles. Isn't it? Isn't it? Pickles. Pickles. Yeah, who said that? Cucumbers. <laughs> this thing here, its name is called a sea cucumber. And I thought it was the most unusual looking thing I've ever seen. It looks like a big fat worm, but that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> now, did we name all the rest of them? I think we did, didn't we? All right, good. You know, I don't really know anything about it. I don't want to eat it. I just saw it. pictures of it and it looked really unusual, so I thought I'd put it up there for you. All right, then, of course, there's a few other things that you might know about here. Um, who can give us another one? Yes, Green White Shirt. Okay, we have sharks over here. Kyson? Okay, we've got the whales. Yes. Dolphins. The dolphins. And what's this thing up here? A seal. A seal. It's an orca. Well, oh, okay. it's a killer. Oh, it's orca. But anyway, Bills are blue. these are some different no, types orca. of fishes as well that you might know. Now, what I want you to think about is we've looked at just a few of them. You can put your hands down. We've just looked at a few sea creatures tonight. But remember, there are over 30,000 of them. And we don't have time to look at all of them tonight, or we would be here forever. Yay! Yes. <laughs> so anyway, but what I want you to remember is that God made each one of those. And not only did God make them, but he knew exactly what they were going to need. Some of these fish or sea creatures that we've talked about today, they need to be in salt water or in the ocean. And God knew which ones needed to be there. And so he put them in the ocean. Others of them you will find in fresh water, which are like your rivers or your lakes or your ponds. And so God put those fish in there. Some of them need to be in warmer waters. So God put them in areas where they would be a little bit warmer water. Some of them can survive in colder water. And so God put those animals in the colder water. And you know what I should have found were some of those fish that are way, way, way down at the very bottom of the I ocean. Know so. It's okay, you can tell me later, that's great. Um, but God had a certain place and he knew where each one of those fish would be. None of these fish, even that yucky old looking sea cucumber, it is not an accident, God made that. In fact, I will tell you, you were asking me what you could do with it. I saw some people eat the sea cucumber. Now, I've never eaten it, and I have no idea what it tastes like, but some people must. All right, now, we've talked a lot about fish because that was the first thing that God made on the fifth day. But there's something else that God made as well. So let's look at that really quickly. I'm just going to read this first. You can see this one has the letter B, which means it's the last part of the other verse that we just read. And fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. What else did God make? Everybody say birds. Yes, birds. Good. And God was really creative, not only with the fish, but also with the birds. Because God didn't just make one or two or ten birds. But scientists tell us there are like 10,000 different kinds of birds. And God also made a beautiful sky for those birds to be in. He made the trees and the bushes in order for them to have a place to put their nest or just to be able to perch on. He also made um, some of these trees and different plants make seeds and nuts and fruit in order for the um, birds to be able to eat. God thought of everything when he was creating things. Now, I want us to look for a few minutes though, at these birds that I have up here. Anybody know what this bird up here is? Um, let's see. Yes. A hummingbird. A hummingbird. How about this one down here? Yes. Pelican. Pelican. How about this one up here? Rebel. Um, an eagle. How about this one down here? Kaylee. A bluebird. A uh, blue jay is what it's called. Good. Now, everybody sit down for a minute. My glove. It's uh, okay. It too tight. We'll, we'll get it in a minute. All right, hold on. Just a minute. I want us to look for just a few minutes at the beaks of all of these birds. If you notice, they all look different, don't they? There's not one of those beaks that really all look alike. This hummingbird has a really long, thin, pointy beak, doesn't he? Yep. Why do you think he has that long pointy beak? For nectar. 
we're here for our lab for day number five. On the fifth day of creation, God created the birds and the fish. We talked about that in our lesson today. So in our lab, we're going to do some experiments, have some activities having to do with birds and fish. Now, we tried and tried to think of some examples or some activities to do with fish, and we couldn't think of anything. But we did come up with two different activities about birds, and so that's what we're gonna do this week. So the very first activity that we're gonna do today has to do with the bones of birds. Now, if you've studied much about the bones of birds, you will know that they are a little bit hollow inside. Most animals and human beings' bones have um, bone marrow inside of them, and so they're not uh, hollow, but a bird's bone is. Now, it's not completely hollow, but it has lots of holes inside of it um, so that air can go inside of it. Now, why do you think a bird's bones would be somewhat hollow? Now, if you said it so that they'll be able to be lighter in order to fly, that's not exactly right. Because if you were to take a bird of a certain size and then find another animal the very same size, their bones would actually weigh the same. But the bird's bones are gonna be hollow and the other animal's bones will not be. So I'm going to use this piece of paper just as an example. Here's a piece of paper that I rolled up and it's a little bit hollow. The outside of the bones, bird's bones is thicker, it's denser. And so it's actually just as heavy as the other animal's bones would be. But there's something special about the way God has made those bones. Even though they're a little bit hollow inside, they are quite strong in order to be able to hold up the bird and to not just be broken very easily. So this experiment that we're going to do today has to do with birds' bones and to see if they're very strong or not. So what you want to do is take just a regular piece of printer paper. I'm just using some recycled paper, no problem. Um, whatever kind of paper, just regular printer paper, and you want to make it so that it's the long way. And you're just going to take your um, paper and you're going to roll it up something like this. And then you'll just use regular tape and just tape a little bit at the top and the bottom. And you want your um, opening to be roughly about an inch. So something like, like that. To save time, I already did them and you want three of them, okay? And then you'll put them on a surface and you will stack them something like this. And then just take a styrofoam paper plate, whatever you have, just not your mom's good dishes, okay? Because it will break, all right? So we're gonna take our styrofoam plate or if you have a paper plate of some sort and we're gonna put it on top of our bones. Now you wanna sort of make sure that your bones are somewhat evenly spaced apart. And I'm gonna put this one just a little bit more that way. All right, now you've got everything set up. Now, you can just go around your house and find all kinds of things that you could put on top of here to test the weight of these birds' bones, okay? So the example that we saw on the internet said coins. We just didn't have a lot of coins because we can't get a lot of coins right now. So I brought a variety of other things. I have just some of these little fruit snacks. So you can put some of these fruit snacks on and you can think about counting them and think about what you've put on there so far. So far that's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. Yeah, I'm here so the, some star crunches. I just found whatever was here at the kitchen of the church. Again, find something that you have at your house. So we have, I think, what did you say? Six or seven uh, fruit snacks. We now have five star crunches. And if we look underneath, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. All right. So I'm going to take these off. Maybe we need to try something a little heavier, okay? So I have some other things over here. 
let's see what we can put on that would be heavier. So part of being a scientist is just being a trying and experimenting. You might have had an idea in your mind, oh, just a few coins. I know when I first tried it with a few coins, I thought it would hold it up. I thought these would, would maybe make the things bend, but this is strong so far. So we could try, well, I'm gonna knock them over though if I'm not careful. Hold on, let me get them positioned again. All right, well, I just have some cans. Maybe your mom has some cans of things in the, in the kitchen. So let's put a couple of these on and see if we can make it work here. I was hoping I could get four of those on there maybe, but I don't think so. All right, well, we've got three of those cans and still the bones are not falling apart or breaking. Um, let's see, maybe if we put some water bottles on here, what do you think about those? Need more and more maybe? Oh, and it's still keeping strong. It should kind of buckle underneath here a little bit. It's not doing that. So, hmm, what else could we put on there? Well, I've got this big can. Maybe we could actually stack this big can on here. You want to be careful in case it might fall over or fall down because it's too heavy. Huh. I still can't make it go down. Hmm. Well, I have this really big can. I wonder if I put this big can on here, what would happen? Let's try and see. I think that did it, but look what I put on there. I had this big one, I had three of these cans, and I had three water bottles, all of this weight before my legs finally gave way. And you can see this is quite, these are all very heavy. So it was a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. You try it at home with, you don't have to have exactly these things, just find what you can have in order to test the weight and see what kind of things you can find out that you, your bird's legs will hold up to. All right, now we're ready for our next experiment. This also has to do with birds, only this will be doing with birds' beaks. And so we have a little worksheet here that we're going, or chart that we're gonna use uh, for this experiment. You'll see on this side that we actually have five different categories. And so this is the different kinds of beaks that we have. We have a sucking beak, which we're gonna use with our straw. We're gonna use our probing beak, which will be our tweezers. This would be if we needed to get into small spaces, maybe to get tiny insects out of the bark of trees or small little spaces. We have strong beak, our pliers. We have a tearing beak. There are some birds that um, they like to eat other animals, and so they need a strong beak that will tear the flesh and so that they can have that to eat. And then the last thing is a scooping beak. There are some birds that would scoop down and would get different things, and so we have this one as well. Now we know these aren't really like bird's beaks, but they're supposed to just be an example to kind of show us what kind of um, beaks birds might have. And we've been learning in our lessons that God has made, designed everything for a purpose, and he has designed it as a wonderful designer. And he has a plan for every bird and what that bird is gonna eat. And so he's given it certain kinds of beaks to go with the things that it will eat. So we've tried to come up with some of the things that a bird might sort of eat. Some birds only drink nectar or juice from flowers. So we have a flower here. In this one, we have some bits of rice, which are supposed to be like little insects. And in here, you only want to get the colored pieces of rice. Okay, we've got some sunflower seeds because there are some birds that are just seed eaters or nut eaters. Um, we've got a marshmallow here, which is going to represent the flesh eating uh, birds that might eat other animals. We've got some fish here and we're gonna dump those inside our water because some birds eat the fish out of big lakes or rivers or ponds and things like that. 
And then we also have some dirt here and you can see our worms that are in there as well. So the idea here is you want to use your investigative skills and you want to discover if I was if I was a bird and I had a certain kind of beak, what kind of things would I be able to eat? So you want to just use the different things and experiment. For instance, if I have a flower, I'll put my flower right here. If I had a flower, would I be able to use a scooping beak for that? Well, I can't even get the scoop inside, can I? So that's not a good option. What if I had a kind of a short, strong beak? It also won't even go inside my flower. I mean, I can put my tearing beak inside, but when I go to do that, I get very little nectar out. I mean, I would, would die of thirst if I were a bird and that's all that I got. Same thing with this one. It'll go inside the flower, but goodness, I'm not gonna get a whole lot out there, am I? But then we have the straw. And of course, if we were to put this inside here, look at how much nectar I can get out of here now. Yes. Now, I know you might say, well, what bird has a straw for a beak? Well, it's not really a straw, but if you think of the hummingbird, it has a very long, thin beak and it drinks nectar from flowers. And so it would be something like this and that's how it would get its um, uh, the nectar out of the flower. So this is one uh, of the foods and then you can discover on your own some of the other ones. What of these five different kinds of beaks that we're talking about would be really good for getting only the colored parts out? Now you might find that some of them will work but they're not going to be really fast or really effective, okay? Uh, which one are good at cracking seeds? Which one are good at trying to tear apart the flesh of this marshmallow that we're using? Which one are good for getting the worms out of the dirt? And which one is good for scooping out the fish? And remember with this one, if you are a bird and you're flying over the water, you're probably kind of higher up and you're gonna to have to dive down into the water. So you want a kind of beak that's gonna be very good for being accurate in order to dive down, scoop it out and get it. So you can kind of mark your results of what you find and which ones you find to be very good out of, uh, for each one of these categories of food and then determine what kind of beak would be the very best for each of the different foods that we have listed. Well, I hope you'll have fun today in trying some of these different experiments and just be creative and find what you can find that God had a design and find out what kind of beaks that he designed in order for the food that these birds were going to eat. Well, I hope you'll have fun with this experiment and we'll see you next week.